Hey, it's Chuck here, and we're back with another episode of our Hawthorne Village Report. And um, we do this every month. I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if I could sit down right beside you and read through the report with you? And unfortunately, I can't do that with everybody we send the report to. So accept this video as, as me trying to uh, do the next best thing. So February 2011 report, we're on the last day of February when I'm sending this. And the report itself, we'll get into some of the numbers. So what we're finding is the, the February numbers haven't come in yet. They come in usually early March. But we actually saw January as an average sale price was worse than December. But I, what I saw was that didn't really reflect in Milton. This is for all over the GTA, right from Burlington to Bowmanville and all the way up just south of Barrie. And my experience in Milton is we actually experienced quite a bit of a kick up, especially in the lower price ranges. There just wasn't enough good stuff. So when you looked at the numbers here, what we saw was all 17 townhomes that were listed actually sold. So that was higher than it ever was. And, and again, that reflects my personal experience. Semis actually were a little bit lower. So 16 listed, nine sold. And then we saw detached homes is less than half. So people, interestingly enough, they go, oh, Milton won't be a problem to sell my house. You have to be good. You've got to do the right things. The setup is, is a big part of it. And what we're seeing is, is detached homes can hover anywhere from 37 to probably 60%. Um, so, which means you have a one in three or maybe at most like a one in two chance of getting your home sold. So do you want to be out of one and two? Do you want to be one or do you want to be two? There's going to be a winner and a loser out of there. And, uh, and so it's important to really do things the right way, get the right advice, make sure the, the home looks its best, um, so last month, January, and then we've got year-to-date January 2011, we're going to have the, the March stats out soon, so we're going to let you know what those are when they do come out. And, uh, and then there's the homes that are currently for sale, um, just to give you an idea of competition. Remember, asking prices in no way resemble sale prices. They're completely different. And, uh, and so just because somebody's asking something does not mean that the home is actually worth that. So there's about 10 or 12 pages there. There's three easy ste steps that you can take. And one of the first things is a, a pinpoint price analysis. So we can even do it by email. It really depends on what stage you're at. I look at things as the report is your baseline. If you want to take it one step further, if you tell me a bit about your house, I can probably give you a range over the phone. It's not a big deal at all. If you want a more exact number, really we need to see it in person. And the other thing to remember, a lot of agents just focus on sold prices, but it's also what's currently available. Your competition, in my eyes, is as important or even more important than the historical information because something that sold two or three months ago and, and you're comparing to it, it's a completely different environment. If you're the only one for sale, and we've seen this over and over again, um, if, if you fit into a little niche where there's nothing really competing with you, you can often do very well. So there's a strategy to pricing a home that, that has more to do with just averaging out the last five sales. We also do something called a room-by-room -room review. So we've got a 16-page guide that we can go through with you. It usually takes about an hour, and there's things that you should do. Definitely, there's things that you could do, which my definition of could do is that Probably not going to affect your bottom line very much, but it's going to make your job a lot easier when you sell and uh, and the things not to do. There's, there's certain things that people tell me that they're planning and I go, please don't do that. So anyhow, it's a great, uh, it's a great session. And the last thing is our silent market of homes. I've spent on Google more than $30,000 in the last five years to attract emails and people to our site. And so I've got this database of about 6,000 email addresses and we do a, a daily video called MiltonDailyHomes.com. If you want to check that out, the password is awesome to get in all lowercase. But those people watch our videos. And I'd say we get about 250 to 500 people a day that watch them. And so it's easy for me to profile a home that's not even listed yet and potentially drum up some activity. So just know that that's an option. We have a lot of ways that we can spread the word. I think more than anybody I've, I've ever seen in town in terms of exposure. So one last thing I want to share with you before we, uh, we head out is there's a, um, 
there's a, a little PowerPoint presentation. We normally do this with our buyer class. And what I talk about is people ask me all the time, how's the market? When's the right time to buy a home? And you know, there's some rules changing in, in on March 18th that basically are going to allow buyers to no longer have 35-year mortgages to bring it down to about a 30-year mortgage. Um, in, in layman speak, what that does is if you could qualify on a 35-year mortgage for $300,000, if they push it to a 30, now you're squeezing the payments in a shorter period. So now you could only go up to a 280 mortgage with the same salary. So it does affect affordability. Um, but again, that was a smart thing to do. But the big thing that I'm looking at looming ahead is when are interest rates going to change? And I'm going to show you the significant effect that interest rates can have on prices. So people say, how's the market? When's the right time to buy a home? And even if you could time prices magically, which I've never seen anyone that could do it, um, you can't really time interest rates. And they tend to do something very unusual and kind of cool. Let me show you what I mean. So what goes up means the other goes down. So if we looked at, and I see buyers all the time that are waiting for this. If we took a purchase price of $300,000 and said the next year it's going to go down by $34,000 and the year after that it's going to go down even more. So that represents an 11% drop in price and then the following year 21%. And usually what causes this is a change in interest rate. So what we're looking at is the $300,000 home at 5%, 266 at 6%, and a 238 at 7%. So when's the best time to buy a home? It's an interesting question. Now, here's the answer. When you look at your monthly payments, they're exactly the same. So what that means is that for a 1% increase in interest rates, that's going to that that completely cancels and nullifies on a on a per month basis an 11% drop in price 1% 11% okay so they so it's literally it's going it's it has an inverse relationship and we've seen this historically over and over again so if you're looking at buying a home the good news is that it's probably going to cost you the same amount today or tomorrow or next week or next year but when we're looking at house prices, and if you're counting on your house price, one of the riskiest things you could do is buy from a builder right now where the home is ready a year from now, and then this situation could conceivably happen. I'm not saying it will or it won't. Uh, nobody has a crystal ball, but I think the writing's on the wall that we've had low interest rates for so long that something's got to give. And when interest rates do change, I'm of the opinion that prices are going to have to change because salaries aren't changing. People's amount of money that they're allocating to a home is not going to change significantly. So that's just my two cents. You may agree or disagree, but I mean, I've, I've, I really think that there's a lot of people in the market that don't, that have never gone through a down cycle in real estate. Now, the great news is in a down cycle, you can often win too, especially if you're moving to a bigger home. Because let's say your $300,000 home is worth 266 next year. Okay, so if you if we plugged you into the example, and then the great news is that home that you buy at $400,000 has also lost 11%. So actually the amount that's lost is greater than the amount that you've actually lost and so you can win overall it's like you've taken one step back and then two steps forward if you're looking at buying a bigger home so anyhow that's enough rambling i hope you enjoy the report and we're going to keep going with them every single month and if you have any questions you can always give us a call at 905-693-9346 see you later bye